And I can say that. So you come. <laughs> okay, here. Yeah, yeah, here. Let me, let me take over. <laughs> it's that time of year again. When to buy? That is the question. Since I don't have money growing on trees or bitcoins hashing from my computer, I always try to get the most from my hard-earned money. Right now, if I had money to buy a new computer, I would definitely wait at least until mid-2013 before clicking that buy button. If you've seen this video on the channel, you know that I made this channel to share my thoughts about features coming to new and innovative products especially next-generation computing devices. In Shipwars 19, we learned about some of the features expected from the June 3rd announcement, when Intel will reveal all there is to know about the highly anticipated fourth-generation Intel Core processor family. For the PC industry, and for most of the retail industry, the third quarter... You mean summer, right? Yeah, summer is huge. There is a season this is the season when millions of parents and students look to upgrade their clothes, their dorm rooms, and their devices. So for many consumer electronics companies, summer product launches are really like a mini holiday season. With the 2013 smartphone refresh in full swing, and the 8th generation consoles getting ready to launch, the PC industry is also getting ready to rev their product lineups. OEMs are eagerly waiting to get their hands on what Intel has been working on. And if you're in the market for the latest and greatest computer, so should you. Despite the tough year for the PC industry as a whole, the average selling price of Apple's x86 computers surprisingly increased over the past nine months. Well, I can understand why they're expensive. They're beautiful, and a girl like me likes beautiful things. This uptick in price actually reversed a downward trend in the average selling price that started in mid-2011. Higher-priced Retina MacBooks and the iMac refresh are the most likely culprits. With Intel's fourth-generation processors, Apple will most definitely refresh the entire Mac lineup in 2013. Setting aside what this will mean for upcoming MacBook Airs and iMacs, this video is all about what the 2013 MacBook Pros might have inside. Last year, Apple shrunk its MacBook Pro product lineup to focus on a 13 and 15 inch version. Since the 13 inch model has a smaller battery because of its smaller form factor, Apple will most likely continue to use Haswell dual cores in updated 13 inch MacBook Pros. These processors don't require as much power, and therefore the smaller battery will still go for up to 7 hours. But the 15 inch models with bigger batteries should support the quad core Haswells that Intel's announcing on June 3rd. I believe Haswell was designed for high resolution computers, like the MacBook Pro Retina. Recently, Apple silently updated the Ivy Bridge processors in the current Retina MacBook Pro products. Currently, the smaller 13-inch has either the same dual-core 2.5GHz i5 or 2.6GHz i7 out of the box. Because of the smaller battery, Apple never included a discrete GPU, so all the pixels rely on Intel's previous generation integrated GPU. But the larger battery in the 15-inch model allowed Apple to cram more performance into a larger form factor. In February, the processors were upgraded to a 2.4 or a 2.7 GHz i7, while still relying on the same discrete GPU to handle the workload. But the more affordable and popular MacBook Pro product lineup doesn't have to be as thin as the Retina's, since it still has an optical drive. Like the Retina MacBook lineup, the 13-inch doesn't have a discrete GPU, while the larger 15-inch gets the same NVIDIA GT 650M. In all honesty, I can't say that much about the latest AMD and NVIDIA chips, except that I'm intrigued by NVIDIA's on-die HD encoding that's compatible with the Project Shield controller we reviewed in Gaming Wars 7. However, Apple has never really been focused on providing the latest and greatest GPU performance. The entire 2012 MacBook Pro lineup at best includes a GT 650M, so given the huge potential in the GPU performance coming from Intel's Haswell chips, I wouldn't be surprised if the discrete GPU disappeared completely from the entire 2013 MacBook Pro lineup. This continues Apple's tradition of not really targeting the high-performance gaming market. Well, for me, I wouldn't buy an Apple product for gaming. I just want it to work and look good. So if you're watching this video after the 2013 MacBook Pro release, click this box or check below to watch the most up-to-date video covering the Apple Keynote and features. And if this video helped you make a final decision, check the Amazon links below to make sure you're getting the best deal. Haswell was really designed for ultra-portable laptops. So down the line, I hope to cover how the 2013 MacBook Air lineup will improve. As always, I want to thank all the latest subscribers. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and maybe share. We have a passion for discovering what's next. We like to figure out how innovative things work, and how they might benefit each of us in real life. Feel free to check out the channel, watch the other videos, and leave some feedback about future videos you'd like to see. <laughs> I, I liked what you said so far. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you in the next video.